So guys, that is it for the 2019 Canadian Grand Prix. And we had a very good race, but a race that was very controversial, as we will get onto later on. But yet, yeah, great race and definitely plenty to talk about from the 2019 Canadian Grand Prix. But first off, let's get into the results of what happened. So winning the race because of a five-second time penalty for Sebastian Vettel is Lewis Hamilton from Vettel second, Leclerc third, Bottas fourth, Verstappen fifth. Then brilliantly, the two Renaults P6 and P7, Ricardo and Hulkenberg, Gasly very disappointingly in P8, Stroll P9 and Kvyat P10. And then finishing outside the points, but finishing the race, Sainz, Perez, Giovinazzi, Grosjean, Raikkonen, Russell, Magnussen and Kubica. And your only retirements, Alexander Albon and Lando Norris. But now, let's get into what happened in this race. First off, for Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton, who are the winners factually of today, even though I don't think he did deserve to win, just like, say, Bahrain. Hamilton did drive very well today, got the line in second place, and was sitting behind Vettel for most, and, well, the whole Grand Prix, he sat behind Vettel, but... At times he was closer, at times he fell a bit uh, further behind. But the controversial moment happened, of course, at the end or near the end of the Grand Prix, where Hamilton was, according to the stewards, pushed into the wall by Sebastian Vettel. Now I'll get on to more so with Vettel why I disagree with that penalty. I will get on to it a lot more so with the incident analysis, which comes out tomorrow lunchtime, guys, at 12pm UK time. But... Hamilton did have to break, but I don't think um, he deserved to win the race because of that penalty. Then he stayed close enough behind so he could win the Grand Prix. And Lewis Hamilton takes another win in Canada. Good drive, but I don't think Lewis deserved to win because I don't agree with the penalty. And I think Vettel was better today. Valtteri Bottas, uh, not that good of a race. He did go away with the fastest lap, but not that good of a race. He lost position to Hulkenberg at the start. Couldn't pass Hulkenberg uh, before Hulkenberg came in. Very poor pace by Bottas until Nico pitted. Then uh, had better pace as the race went on. Pitted, came out, and then passed Daniel Ricciardo for what was and what went on to be P. Well, and I think we have to say, after this weekend, Valtteri Bottas is starting to fall massively behind in the Drivers' World Championship. And I think his World Championship bid isn't over, but it is uh, quite quickly coming to an end. But obviously, in terms of the result, great day for Mercedes as they continue their win record of 2019. Next up is Ferrari. They deserve to win today, and Sebastian Vettel did deserve to win today. Great start by Vettel, great drive by him. Yes, he did make that error at turn four, going off the track and coming back on. But again, as I said during the race watch along, I don't see how Vettel could have done anything differently to avoid what he did. I don't think it was a dangerous re-entry, and I don't see how he really pushed Hamilton off the track. I just don't see how he did and i think the penalty for that is ridiculous is ridiculous sorry but i will get onto that again tomorrow at 12 p.m uk time but vettel for me definitely drive of the day and was very very good in that ferrari hopefully this sebastian vettel is the sebastian vettel we'll continue to see for the next few races and hopefully ferrari uh, continue like they did in canada to get that act together charles leclerc finished in third had a very, very quiet race. Ferrari did kind of mess up his strategy and he could have been there, Charles Leclerc, with Hamilton and Vettel towards the end. Uh, but Leclerc, this weekend, just hasn't had the speed to do uh, so. But for Ferrari, great return to form. They definitely uh, deserve to win. But it was cruelly and undeservedly, in my opinion, took away. Next up is Red Bull. Uh, Max Verstappen finishing P5. I think that's the best he could have done. He did drive uh, quite well in the first stint. Didn't drive massively well. He could have got past, for example, Lando and Norris a bit quicker. But did, I think, well enough in that first stint. And then he passed the two Renaults right after he made his pit stop and finished in P5. So 
considering where he started, I think that's good enough for him. But for Pierre Gasly, I have to say, very, very poor race. To be beaten comfortably on pace by both Renaults is not good enough. And I think the nail is in the coffin of his Red Bull career. I don't see how Gasly can survive at Red Bull after today. Terrible result. And you have to say for Red Bull, this weekend definitely has not been a good weekend for them uh, compared to what they were probably expecting for the Canadian Grand Prix weekend. But now let's get into the midfield. Renault, great, great day and great weekend for Renault. Finishing P6 and P7, miles ahead at the front of the midfield. And yeah, really great day for Renault. And hopefully they can continue this form into their home Grand Prix at Paul Ricard in a fortnight's time. I have to say, Daniel Ricciardo drove so, so well. So did Nico Hülkenberg, by the way, to keep ahead of Bottas and then to be as close to his teammate as he was uh, in the second stint of the Grand Prix. So great by Hülkenberg, great by Ricciardo, and great by Renault. Definitely the best midfield team by a mile in Canada. Next up is McLaren, who did have a disappointing race because... Carlos Sainz, despite pitting early and undercutting massively past other drivers, uh, finished in P11 because he was passed late on by Lance Stroll, the home driver, and Danny Kvyat. Nothing he could really do. Uh, he was on dead tyres and wasn't quick enough to hold off Stroll and Kvyat. And McLaren, you have to say, uh, with Lando Norris's retirement, which I believe is a, uh, a fiery break burning the suspension apart, you have to say for McLaren, considering where they qualified and considering the pace they had, it definitely was not a good result for them. And they'll want to get back to uh, a better result at the next race in France. But definitely McLaren will be disappointed with P11 and a retirement for Lando Norris. Next up, Alfa Romeo. Um, I think the drivers did well considering how poor the car is. I think Antonio Giovinazzi, despite his spin... Uh, at the first corner, about halfway through the Grand Prix. I think he did well enough. Kimi Raikkonen did the best he could, but you have to say the Alfa Romeo is poor. And I think now Alfa will start to slip back in that midfield. They just don't have, aerodynamically or chassis-wise, a good enough car to compete with teams like Renault or even McLaren at the moment, or even Toro Rosso. So yeah, Alfa, not in good shape at all. And I think they are really going to go backwards this weekend. A really poor weekend for Alpha. Also, Haas. What a terrible race for them. Roman Grosjean finishing very low down. Way away from the points. Almost, I think, over half a minute away from a point. Terrible speed by Grosjean. And for Magnussen, he actually got beat by a Williams because his pace was that bad that is how poor he was in the Haas I know he started from the pit lane but wow what a terrible race for him what a terrible race for Haas and I'm gonna have to say this after this weekend I just don't see how Haas at the end of this season can finish as best of the rest in the constructors because they're way too inconsistent and their car on race day is absolutely terrible and Haas come away with no points Toro Rosso though do come away with a point with Danny Kvyat Kvyat drove pretty good nothing amazing nothing great but a pretty good drive by Kvyat to get that final point off of Carlos Sainz going down the inside of Sainz at turn one very late on in the Grand Prix uh, and I think Toro Rosso will be happy with that result as they are still right in there in that fight in the constructors with teams like Racing Point Renault Haas and even you know McLaren and Alpha so Toro Rosso I think will be happy with that Alexander Albon did lose his front wing uh, at the first corner with Antonio Giovinazzi I didn't quite get a good enough angle of you know whose fault it was I'll probably analyze it in the incident analysis video coming out tomorrow uh, but Albon losing his front wing at the start then had to come in and then after that was basically near the back and then retired with some kind of issue at the very end but Toro Rosso scoring a point yet again and that is a very good result 
And then the last team in the midfield is Racing Point. And a very good day for Racing Point as home driver Lance Stroll finishes in P9. Great drive has to be mentioned. His race pace was very strong in the midfield. Very, very good move on Carlos Sainz at the, uh, the chicane, the, the start of the chicane at the very end of the race, breaking around the outside. Great drive by Stroll. Perez had a good first stint, but after that got held up behind other cars and fell behind massively. Drivers like Kvyat and also his teammate Lance Stroll, even though he was ahead of Stroll uh, early on in the Grand Prix. So disappointing for Perez, but for Racing Point, very good result. And hopefully can carry that through to France as they try to progress with their car and hopefully get some more points. And finally, of course, is Williams. The only good thing for Williams is that they beat Kevin Magnussen with George Russell. But of course, Williams are still bad and are at the very back. But guys, that is it for the race review for the 2019 Canadian Grand Prix. It's been a great weekend. It was a very good race. And it was definitely a very, very controversial one.